everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today's video is all about irrigation and how I set up the irrigation at my new property here using drip tape and an automatic sprinkler system. So I'll show you the whole process from beginning to end, the different uh, tools and products that I use will all be talked about and listed in the video's description as well. So be sure to go down to the description. I got all of my drip parts from dripdepot.com. They've been my favorite drip provider for the last couple of years. They just have great customer service and the highest quality parts. I've got a link down in the description for Drip Depot. Anything that you buy through Drip Depot will help support the channel. So thank you so much for using my link. So I'll be showing you guys the drip system, the new manifold that I recently built, and I've got an episode all about how to build the drip tape irrigation on and off manifold. Then I'll also be showing you the automatic drip system, how it works, how it's built, and how I got it to give excellent coverage to this little rectangular area out here. Okay, so now it's time to, to set up the timer, my filters, and all this stuff. So what I have here is an Orbit two valve timer. As far as the kind of domestic home scale garden uh, timers, I like the Orbit ones the best. I've had the, the best success with them lasting a long time. And the batteries in my other Orbit have been on for like two years and it's still working. So very happy with them. I've got a particle filter here. And this is just a very fine mesh screen that captures dirt and other smaller particles. I've got some dirt in there from before. I'm gonna rinse this out. Then I have my Boogie Blue Plus filter. The Plus filter uh, lasts longer and filters out some chloramine as well. You should check out your local water district and see what contaminants that they put into your water. The reason that I use this is to help keep the biology in my soil as healthy as possible. So this is just removing any heavy metals or chlorine, which of course is killing bacteria. The last thing here is the backflow preventer. So all irrigation systems, you should, at the main point, you need to have a backflow preventer just in case of flooding or something weird with the pressure can happen where some of the irrigation water can come back up into the line and it makes it safer so that if there was some sort of contamination in the water from the irrigation that went up into the house, it wouldn't make anyone sick. You know, this is mainly for people using pesticides and herbicides and poisons and stuff, or raw manure. We're not using those things, but you do need to have these just in case. And most irrigation codes require that you do this, just so you guys know. And I just do it, of course, as a precaution. And of course, you know, I, this is not my house and I want to protect my homeowners here. So, oh, and the last piece... This little gadget I got off of Amazon to try. You know, it's not the best solution, but it measures about a thousand gallons and then you gotta keep an eye on it because it'll reset back to one. But I won't be using that many gallons out here since it's such a small garden. So I should be able to track it pretty well. And this is to help me and the landowner, you know, come up with the correct water bill that I owe them. This will be the first thing that comes into the, the faucet here. And I'm just running straight out of the house. This thing was leaking so I actually had to tighten this nut and now the leak is totally gone. You can also tighten this nut on top. Over time when you're twisting and untwisting this thing this nut just comes loose. Then I'm gonna put the timer and now you know now this is starting to have some weight on it and we're gonna be putting pressure on these threaded connections. So to help mitigate that I've got some different garden buckets here. I'll just slide it underneath. We go. I could move some wood chips out of the way and then that's a pretty good level though. Nice and clean. Twist it back together, all snug. And station number one is going to be the drip irrigation. Station number two will be my sprinkler setup. I want to make sure it has enough so I'm not going to run any filtration on it at all. I'm not really worried about the sprinkler getting clogged. And it looks like it's all going to fit. I was a little worried that it wouldn't actually work out here but it's cool, this, it'll just rest on the brick here and relieve pressure. So now I need to convert this to my half inch. Now, I actually think I should put a 90 in here to make the connection good. Otherwise, if I put this on here and I bend it, it's gonna probably put a little kink in there. So I'm gonna get a 90. So I'm running drip tape that is 15 mil, which means I can run a 15 PSI pressure reducer. Okay, so here's our final result. And that's, that line is, of course, running to the line we've already run. It's going to all our 
drip tape valves. So the next step I'm gonna do is blow out each of these connection points and get those tied off with some electrical tape. Then I'll be cutting out all of the brand new drip tape. The drip tape at my market garden back home is 0.46 gallons per hour every six inches at 15 mil. This time they were sold out of that and I was also kind of interested to try out the 0.25 gallons per hour and that'll just allow me to have more pressure so I can just run less valves. So we'll see how that works out. So now we're gonna pressurize and test for the leaks. As always, whenever I'm rolling something out, I'm just putting a pipe in there and something to sit it on so it can spin freely so that I can do this all by myself. So I am super happy with the new manifold. It was insanely easy to move the lines in one chunk. Uh, as you saw in the video, just moving them from side to side and then putting them back on. So man, I'm just so stoked on how easy and it's easier, cheaper, and more efficient. So gotta love it. So I'm just gonna put the lines back on. I'll have the first three beds planted and this will be the first succession of planting. And the sprinklers are working wonderfully as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the sprinkler system and how that is all set up. The sprinkler is also being run on half inch, but three quarter inch would be an even better size to run it out. So I have more water volume, I could spray it out. But because I'm, this is such a small piece of property, it's about 1200 square feet. I figured that I could actually do it on half inch and I, and I was able to. But for anything larger, you should go three quarter inch. And that even goes for your drip system as well. Anything that's 2,000 square feet and larger, I'd recommend just using three quarter inch poly. That way you don't have to run as many valves. I've got my first valve here that's running to all the drip system. Then this valve is running to my sprinklers. Okay, there's no pressure reducer on it. It runs to this T, which runs out to this corner, runs over to that corner, runs down the line, and then all the way over to the middle. So it's all connected on one system and I was able to have enough pressure to do it. So now checking this out down here, I just put a two by four stake into the ground, use some coupling. I did put on and off valves on here just for the heck of it. That way it would give me a little bit more control in case I didn't want to, want to water a certain area or I can actually control the pressure with this. If I run it at half, then less water is able to come out, right? So it's just another way to control how much water comes out of this thing. So this is just your standard half inch poly twist on and off connector with a valve. These are the ones I'm using for all of the new manifold designs as well. Then as we come up here, it's half inch compression to three quarter inch pipe threaded. This fitting, the outer diameter is threaded in three quarter inch pipe threaded. The inside diameter is threaded in half inch pipe threaded. And then I've got plumbing tape on the inside of this to help it be more watertight. This has a washer, so it is watertight. Then this is just a Rainbird cheap plastic sprinkler. They spray about 40 feet under full pressure. These sprinklers are spraying about 30 feet for me when I have them all running at the same time, 30 to 35 feet on the half inch size. 